Film Club. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Film Club. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Harrison, and with me, as always, it's Andy Donaldson. Hello. Every week in Film Club, we invite you along to watch a film with us. We dive into one of cinema's best, and this week, we're taking a look at The Terminator. Everything goes back to one of the biggest 18s action flicks, which is The Terminator. It's about Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's a Terminator, come back in time to kill a woman before she has a kid. And that kid turns out to be the revolutionary leader in a future war. So time travel, cyborgs. This is a story of like future versus the present, whereas present has no clue about the future. Who were, Mrs. Is there anything more (laughs) iconic to the 80s than The Terminator? I, 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 honestly, mate, I, this is what I mean. Like, I struggle to think of something. Fuck you, asshole. Shout out there to the soundtrack at Brad Fiedel. Incredible and made one of the best pieces of theme music ever. Yeah. It's so perfectly soundtrack. pitched as well because like mm. using the synthesizer for this, I know it's it's a little almost hokey at this point to say like it's almost retro futuristic because the 80s used it so much as as an, as a vision of the future. But it just so works for this. That like that tone in the background, Ta-da-da! you know, like that, and it keeps you on edge. Yeah. It, it just keeps you on edge, doesn't it? Love it. And Absolutely it just like, it. yeah. From the opening so, few seconds, like it yeah. hits you and it's like, oh, that's good. I'll be back. This is James Cameron's baby. He has a writing credit on this. He's obviously the director. It's one of the films that launched his career. He was obviously he was doing you know, uh, bits and pieces at the time. This came out two years before Aliens. While this was in production, he was pitching to Fox for Aliens. It's one of the films that defines James Cameron's career. And what yeah. it says about James Cameron is that he is a guy who loves big concept. And he's also able to deliver on that big concept in a very enigmatic and energetic way. What better example of a film coming together than this? I mean, this this is his second major feature film, Andy. Like, And for it to come out with this and just this kind Mm -hmm. of... I mean, this is a $6 million budget, $6.4 million budget (laughs) to try and do a time travel story, to try and do Mm. an action film, to try and do something that has multiple like chase sequences in it, to try and, you know, which are brilliant. We're, talk, we're talking large action set pieces. It that's that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible to achieve that. And we're also not in a period of time, what, 1984. So the birth of the blockbuster is sort of still, what, less than 10 years prior. If you think Jaws and then you sort of you want yeah. to punch over to Star Wars, brings in the birth of the blockbuster. Yeah, we've had a couple of years of it, but it's not exactly this established thing yet. Terminator is one of the films that really sort of solidifies the idea of the blockbuster, especially the, the idea of the franchise, because holy crap, does this film work well as the beginning of a franchise? Oh, I know, mate, I know. It lures you in, it's like modern day in the 80s sort of thing. This is what's happening. Oh, we've got a diner, two flatmates living together. No, no, like there's an assassin out to kill you. There's a whole future war, which by the way, those snippets of the future war are absolutely exceptional. Mm. You've got this future war, you've got this kind of law that they're like almost delving into. They're telling you the story before it's even happened, before Mm. you know it. It's quite comparable to how Star Wars handled A New Hope back when it was just called Star Wars. It does a lot of sort of hand waving. It does very, there's a suggestion of a larger world, there's a suggestion of a law. They don't really explain what like a HK is. 
there's one line where Kyle Reese sort of drops a mention of Skynet. They don't really talk about the specifics of the war and all that sort of stuff because right now it's unimportant. It's feeding yeah, the audience's yeah. imagination. And by feeding the imagination, that's how you essentially get a franchise. It's exactly what Star Wars did in, in The New Hope. And it's exactly what they're doing here. And I'm similar to you where Terminator 2 was my first introduction to the Terminator series. Same, and same. To me, uh, Sarah Connor was always that that sort of like badass character. Gruff. Yeah, so yeah. going back, I remember the very first time I watched this, I remember being just shocked at her introduction in this film and how she's, she's sort of like the every girl. You know, she's she's working at a diner. She's going out on a Friday night. She gets stood up by a guy. She's such just a regular girl. And it's not until that very last scene where you get a glimpse of who she'd become. I haven't seen this in years. So when I saw Sarah Connor at the start, I was thinking, what's happened here? <laughs> and genuinely, genuinely. Like, and I saw her. And then obviously more and more came. Then she kind of like, she's not exactly, a, she's not at all a bad female character. She cause some, They could have easily had her where she's just screaming and whining. Mm. Like, that's rough. But she's not. She's very, she's on the ball, like, you know, worried about the people around her that's being yeah. chased. She goes I, into I, lo- the I love how, public. yeah, she clicks on so mm. quickly to the fact she's being followed and the fact that she's next on the list. Linda Hamilton does absolutely like kick-ass job at portraying her. She's got great chemistry uh, with Kyle Reese, isn't it? Yeah, Kyle Reese. Um, and then you've got <laughs> you've got Arnie, who's the Terminator. Who is this? I don't know if this is like one of his first first debuts. Or obviously, uh, at this point, Alan Schwarzenegger had had his bodybuilding career, and mm-hmm. he'd already been Conan the Barbarian. That's it, Conan. Before so this, yeah, he had. Yeah. You know, actually, it's funny because for the Terminator, Arnold actually auditioned for Kyle Reese. And oh, really? at one point, apparently, they were, they were very much really thinking about him. And ultimately, James Cameron sort of decided not to go with him because he was too physically imposing, you know, in order to make Arnold, yeah, Kyle yeah. Reese, and then make the Terminator even more terrifying. You've got to get somebody who can physically impose upon Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that's not an easy person to find. It, actually, yeah, that's a really valid point. But his presence throughout this film, the way he like kind of robotically moves, the way he turns his head, that mm. kind of constant stare, yeah. you've got to give credit to the guy. Like, Especially someone like Conan, straight from Conan, where Conan's quite like a, a gruff character. He's got personality. He's very human, despite being like a bar- barbarian. Whereas in this, he pulls off that kind of robotic kind of portrayal he so does. well. And I love, the, I love really does. the silly little touches, like not making the character blink the entire film. They were very careful about how they handled the effect and the integration of like Arnold's performance with that. And I think there's only one scene where it's a little comical. <laughs> he's in the mirror. He's when he's in front of the mirror, yeah. And they, they mm. try and get away with the full head. They try and like recreate Arnold Schwarzenegger's entire head. And it just doesn't work, unfortunately. Yeah, it doesn't. It, I agree. And this is one of my not issues of the film. It's like it has dated over time, yeah. to be fair. But and it's, it's a thing. shame because like the other bits Sorry. are incredible. I love the bit where he opens mm. his arm up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's incredible. The and arms. the part where the robots on the bridge as well, like that's just yeah. quite. It's just heavily imposed. Do you know what I mean? The whole, the, the whole I really ending. Hope I hope that Arben got influence from a close shave from the Terminator from that moment on the bridge. The only other thing I have an issue with is um, the sex scene. I'm not a fan, but no. I'll just I'll give it. The film needed it to establish that he's the father of John Connor. Then go yeah. for it. Yeah. They get so close to getting away yeah. with the whole John Connor twist, and it's not until yeah. they're under the bridge where there's this really awkward conversation around, like, "Oh, he never spoke about his father," and at that point, the entire audience is like, "All oh, right, you're his father." <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it, maybe not had that. The thing is, again, I'm not going to put that against it because it's such a great film. It, oh, it's just it's incredible. incredible! What a film! I absolutely love it, and it's for me. Action films tend to be um, quite dull, but in the '80s, there was yeah. there was a tangibility to them. And there was a visceral nature to them. And this is one of the finest action films to have come out of the 80s. Not only is it like an action film, it very cleverly uses the sort of subgenre of a slasher that was sort yeah. of birthed the decade prior. Do you remember when we were talking about John Carpenter's Halloween introducing the slasher in the 70s? Yeah, well, that's essentially yeah. what the Terminator is. You know, he's he's a sci-fi slasher monster. He is Mike Myers. He is Freddy Krueger. He's the thing that you can't stop that will just keep coming for you. But it's painted in a sci-fi sort of makeup. 
Yeah, it's it's like the cat and mouse kind of game, isn't it? You feel the ending, like the fact that it genuinely almost feels like it's come to a conclusion when they blow the truck up, yeah, and then like yeah, the, yeah. that incredible animatronic puppet that's all like comes out of the fire, where it's just the metallic skeleton. That's gorgeous. It's so and it's good, terrifying. and it keeps sort of coming at them. And obviously now you've lost the the human facade, and then bit by bit they sort of like break him apart and destroy him and 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 i love just how it finally comes down to him with that outstretched hand her up against a wall and yeah. her just like just being able to reach that button it feels very satisfying to have such a large-scale film come down to such a small-scale resolution I, I honestly i was thinking i was just thinking the hydraulic uh, hydraulic press channel they'll be absolutely loving this end in this film if they haven't seen it already it's unreal <laughs> genuinely like it can kill a Terminator. I love it. <laughs> so th- there is the Terminator. I mean, you've probably seen it by now and you probably really already it. love it. But nonetheless, it, it deserves a little bit of gushing every now and then. But Andy and I are going to be back once again next week where we're going to take a look at what we can only hope is another film to gush over because it's time for the Terminator 2. Judgment Day will be back. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> So until then, get watching. Oh, I'm so sorry, mate. <laughs>